These lilies look absolutely stunning in the shops when they're in full bloom with those big beautiful white flowers and dark green foliage and this is why they're such a popular house plant with so many people. The problem most people find though is that when they bring the plant home the flowers die back and they very often don't return leading people to throw the plant out. I'm on a mission to stop this happening to save this plant from extinction in your home so let me share with you why the flowers often don't return and how you can easily change this and get the beautiful white blooms on this plant again. Stay tuned to the end because I talk about a houseplant con that everyone should stop getting sucked into, especially with this plant. So let me start with some disappointing news and an industry secret. The peace lily you buy in the shop with all those beautiful white flowers will be the best that your plant ever looks. This doesn't mean we can't get it to bloom again and for it to still look gorgeous. The secret that the growers don't want us to know is that the peace lilies we find in the shops are fed something called gibberellic acid, and I think I'm saying that correctly, which is a natural plant hormone that forces the plant to bloom. This is why the flowers are so abundant in the shops. The growers stimulate flower blooms so that they're more attractive to buyers and they increase their sales. Do you think this sounds like a con? I'm in two minds myself, but let me know in the comments. The gibberellic acid wears off when we bring it home and the flowers die off and people really struggle to get them to bloom again. This is partly because it takes a while for the plant to bloom again after they've been treated with gibberellic acid and partly because they do need specific conditions for them to do so. I think this is why I really like this plant. Whenever I get it to flower again, it feels like a fantastic achievement and I'm really happy with myself. Even if you get the conditions that I'm going to explain in this video exactly right, you're never going to get it to bloom more than a handful of flowers at a time unless you're somehow using some dark arts we have access to gibberellic acid. My plant periodically sends out a couple of flowers at a time and this is sufficient for me. I still think it looks gorgeous. Now healthy peace lilies will normally flower twice a year, once in the spring and again in autumn. So don't get frustrated when your plant is not flowering in the middle of summer or winter. If you keep your plant two meters away from the nearest window, you're unlikely to have much luck getting this plant to bloom again. This is because giving the plant as much natural indirect light as possible is one of the main things this plant needs to send out flowers. Now peace lilies can tolerate darker conditions and they will happily sit there as a green plant in your home. To get the most out of them though, try and place them as near to a window as possible so that they get at least six hours of bright indirect light. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, I find that placing this plant next to an east facing window where it even gets three to four hours of direct morning sun is the best place for it. This maximizes the amount of light the plant receives so they can effectively photosynthesize and store energy to send out flowers. Without enough light to photosynthesize, the plant won't be able to store enough energy for blooming. I would avoid giving this plant afternoon sun because this is too strong for the plant and will likely scorch the leaves and it will start to fade and turn brown. I do keep my plant about two meters away from my east facing window because space is at a premium next to the window and it does still flower from time to time. If you're concerned that your room does not have enough natural light, such as if your room faces the north in the northern hemisphere and you want your plant to bloom, a great option is to invest in some grow lights. Grow lights are fantastic at replicating sunlight and we can control the amount of light we give our plants. I keep my grow lights on for 10 hours each day and I see fantastic growth in my plants. I could up this to 12 or 14 hours if I wanted to see even better results. So do follow my link in the description of this video for a juicy 15% discount at Sansi Lighting if you're on the lookout for a good grow light. If you've got a peace lily at home, you might have noticed that it's quite a thirsty plant. And my general advice for house plants is to water about once a week during the spring and summer, but always to check the soil first. And I find I need to water my peace lily a little more often. Watering your peace lily correctly will impact on whether you'll be able to get it to flower again. An overwatered or underwatered peace lily will be a stressed plant, and a stressed plant won't be able to store sufficient energy to bloom. Overwatering means that the soil is constantly saturated because you are watering too often which leads to rotting of the roots. If a plant's roots are rotting and dying, then the foliage will be negatively impacted, which affects photosynthesis and thus flowering capacity. Underwatering your plant will also lead to root problems and the plant's foliage will droop and turn yellow. This stress will not allow the plant to grow healthy leaves that are needed for photosynthesis. As ever, my advice is to check the soil before watering, either by sticking your finger in a couple of inches into the soil or using a good old moisture meter. If the soil is wet, then leave it a few days and check again. 
You want the soil to feel moist, but not wet, not bone dry. Check out my Amazon store listed in the description of this video for a link to the moisture meter I use. It's a real game changer for plant care. Beast lilies are hungry plants. Much like my two kids are hungry for snacks all day, every day, peace lilies need to be fed a little more often than your other house plants during the growing season. I feed my peace lily with a liquid fertilizer at least once a month in the growing season, and this helps keep the foliage green and gives it nutrients it needs to flower. The flowering plants need potassium, which is one of the three macronutrients in fertilizer. So you can use a fertilizer that is rich in potassium during spring and autumn to give them the best chance of blooming. A hack that I mentioned in my video about turning kitchen scraps into free natural fertilizer is to use banana peel in the soil of a peace lily, and this will give the plant a little boost in potassium over time. If you have your plant in a bright spot and are watering and fertilizing correctly, and it's still not blooming, then it's time to check the roots. If you've not repotted your peace lily in a few years, then chances are it is root bound. Take your plant out of the pot. If the root ball is majority roots with little soil, then it's time to up pot your plant into some fresh soil. This is important because plants need soil in the pot to hold onto moisture and nutrients to feed the roots over time and make for a healthy plant. If there's no soil in the pot, then the plant can't absorb the water and potassium needed to flower and your plant will remain a plant with just green leaves. If your plant is already large and you don't want to upsize the pot, then another great option is to root prune it and it will respond well to this. Cut the bottom third and around the sides of the root ball and repot into the same pot using some fresh potting soil and the roots will have room to grow again. This is great because it removes damaged or rotten roots that the plant then replaces with new healthy roots. Beast lilies are native to the forest floors of tropical Central America and Southeast Asia, where they get consistent temperature and light year round. This consistency in temperature is important if you want our plant to bloom like it does in the wild. Try not to allow the temperature in your house to drop below 15 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the spring and autumn, and below 10 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, because this will stress the plant and you might not get the blooms that season. If I'm going away for Christmas for a long time, then I set the temperature in my house to not drop below 10 degrees Celsius because I don't want to come back to a plant graveyard. So I recommend you do something similar. Keep your plants away from heaters and air conditioners, as well as drafts and windows and doors. The rapid changes in temperature will do no good for the plant and can impact blooming. You probably notice in the garden center that this plant is credited with the ability to purify the air in your home. It seems to be a particular marketing gimmick that sellers attach to this plant in particular, maybe because of the apparent purifying flowers it has when in the shops. This, however, is a myth that started with a NASA published study in 1989 that has been jumped on by plant sellers the world over to give them a point of difference to sell more plants. I've got a video that talks about this in a lot more detail, but don't believe the hype and ignore sales pitches claiming this. It's simply not true. For more information about root pruning and the fantastic benefits it gives to your plants, then make sure you click on the link here.